Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, apparently today, uh, if you guys saw the update, the frontline update, there was another massive missile strike all throughout Ukraine. Uh, it appears that the Russians have been uh, prepping these strikes basically over a two-week period. Uh, from what I was reading, it seems like Western-sourced intelligence states that Russia needs about uh, between six to eight days, maybe. Uh, I could be pulling that out of my ass, but um, I'm pretty sure I read it somewhere. Like six to eight days after one of these, these big strikes to prepare uh, for the next one, to pick the targets, to know basically uh, what they hit, uh, what needs to be hit next in terms of the power grid or whatever targets they're going to strike, right? So um, just a quick update on that strike. It does appear like um, missiles did hit a lot of these places that I had, uh, I had mentioned um, where they were spotted, but the main targets throughout the country appear more or less to be uh, military infrastructure um, it, it, with a mix of uh, power infrastructure. So, uh, you know, places like Zaporozhia, there was a strike in Zaporozhia at some kind of machine plant that actually builds equipment for electricity. So, uh, you know, possibly uh, transformers or uh, parts, you know, that go into uh, electrical substations and stuff. Um, that factory was hit and, and pretty badly damaged, allegedly. So, um, that could severely hurt Ukraine's ability to repair its uh, en energy infrastructure. Um, there's also been a number of strikes, not just today, but throughout the week, uh, the last week in Kramatorsk, um, trying to destroy uh, frontline infrastructure. I mentioned the other day there was a factory, uh, a, I believe a machine building factory, uh, that was hit, uh, that was actually repairing equipment on the front line as well as acting as a storage place for lubricants and stuff. Well, now um, a, there was a, a strike overnight in the area of Kramatorsk and apparently a power generation facility shut off. So now this entire front line area, Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, uh, Druzhkivka, Konstantinivka is without power. So that's not the main purpose of this video. The main reason is, is um, Ukraine actually... Um, and, and and I kind of suspected something like this because you know Western intelligence uh, two weeks ago was kind of on top of um, the whole when is the next um, strike narrative, and you know they were posting up a lot of material and Ukraine actually tried to preemptively um, strike at the Russians right where their strategic bombers are based. So there was two air bases, one in Ryzan, which is like right on the outskirts of Moscow, as you can see, and then another um, next to Saratov, actually in the city of Ingles. So I'm going to zoom in here and basically show you guys where these bases are. Uh, this is the Ingles Air Force Base and um, military base. I think this is quite a bit of like military stockpiles and stuff that's down here, but it appears like this base is primarily... Um, a station for strategic bombers. Of course, you have right here a history of long-range aviation. You have different Russian bombers. You have um, this is actually a, a, T, a Tupolev 22M3M. This is your backfire bomber. These are Tupolev 95s, bear bombers, and then um, uh, actually don't see it here, but it's on the runway, I believe. Uh, mainly a bunch of bear bombers here. Um, as you can see, this is like Russia's older bomber for sure, but um, still very active, still very capable. Now, this is the newest iteration of Russian uh, strategic bombing. This is a Tupolev 160, uh, which is NATO designated as the Blackjack. Uh, this is a hypersonic or a supersonic, I'm sorry, a supersonic jet powered uh, bomber. But there was a drone strike at this base and at the other base and the story for these drone strikes is specifically at the Ingalls air airfield um, it says three Russian technical servicemen who were at the air airfield were fatally wounded four more servicemen who were wounded were taken to medical institutions where they were pr provided with all of the necessary medical assistance so um, nothing really there on what kind of damage was done to the bombers or was, was some claims that uh, I guess maybe some bombers had been uh, heavily damaged or destroyed. 
there's actually been a satellite image that's come out of this um, more recently and in the satellite image let's see here it actually looks more or less like uh, there's basically uh, no no damage no visible damage on the runway there's still a lot of bombers on the runway um, still a lot of the Tupolev uh, bear bombers and the 160s they're all they all still look like they're there so maybe perhaps for this airfield they didn't really have any success you can see it does look like there are a couple uh, bombers parked on the other side however don't see really any craters any kind of um, you know black damage you would see from from jet fuel burning so as far as we know um, perhaps you know it, it it struck deeper in the base and, and really just just hurt and, and, and potentially killed some technicians now um, there was some damage done to the um, air base or to some some jets at the air base in Ryzen so uh, we're gonna look at this real quick and then I'm gonna show you guys the equipment that this was allegedly carried out with but um, this is an air base in Ryzen it appears to be just like the other base is specifically designated for um, strategic bombers. I mean, zooming in, it looks like you have some old. These looks like some old biplanes or something. I'm not sure. Maybe we have another museum here or something. Uh, some helicopters. Not a lot of fighter jets stationed at either of these air bases, if any. You would think they'd have them um, here, out here, ready to go. But you know, once again, you have this is a TU-22 backfire, a uh, couple bear bombers, um, a couple transport planes, more bear bombers, more backfires, and looks like just a lot of backfires at this base. Not so many of the. Doesn't look like there's any TU-160 uh, blackjacks here. But there was uh, an image that's come out of uh, damage done to a backfire bomber at this air base. And it looks like a fuel truck was hit. Go ahead and pull this up for you guys right here. I don't know why it keeps opening up two at once. But uh, this fuel truck was hit here and did some damage, some cosmetic damage to the back end of this backfire bomber. As you can see up here, this is... Uh, Looks like a rear. It looks like a tail gunner. I didn't even know bombers still had tail gunners. This is, I, this is a, I guess technically an older model as well. Fun fact: I just watched um, Memphis Bell the other day. It's a great, great World War II movie. Of a, a American B-17 crew. Very interesting. Uh, let's see here. I got another picture. This better shows the damage done to this, um, to this bomber. It looks like. You know, potentially might need some new engines. This this one is, um, I'd say, out of commission for a little while. But uh, the most expensive parts of these would definitely be the avionics equipment. So that would that's what's most difficult for um, Russia to get a hold of right now. I'm not saying it's impossible. They of course you know probably produce a little bit of their own and they could buy it internationally. But um, with a reduction in the total amount of chips they can get, uh, they can't really afford to lose a lot of these. So um, they probably won't be able to use this one for a while, but it will um, eventually, eventually be repaired. Now, um, to look at what was used, we're looking at an old Soviet drone uh, that was developed in the late 1970s. Uh, they were actually manufactured at a factory in Kharkov region, and let me read. I kind of want to read the uh, statement that I've seen uh, on them. So, made in the USSR. Let's see here. I want to get the name of them. So it's a um, it's called the Strish, Striz, Striz, Strig, the Strig. I don't know. S T R I Z H. 
uh, and it is a reconnaissance UAV, a long-range reconnaissance UAV. It has a capacity to go over a thousand kilometers. So um, this is what attacked is what was used to attack the airfields. It says um, Ukraine upgraded it slightly and turned it into a combat UAV in March 2022. A Ukrainian modernization program became known. It envisaged the installation of a non-standard high-mass warhead on the UAV. After that, the uh, TU-141, so that's what it is, it's a TU-141 Strig, Strizg, I'm, I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, uh, was turned into a cruise missile of inferior accuracy but with sufficient long range of about 1,000 kilometers. The AFU launched the UAV Strig, as it was called in the USSR, uh, presumably from the territory of Kharkov region, which is situated about 640 kilometers from Moscow. About 152 such planes were manufactured in the Kharkov aircraft plant during the Soviet time from 1979 until 1989. Quite a significant portion of them was left in the territory of Ukraine, and all of them were probably upgraded to missiles. So, um, actually very interesting. Apparently, uh, their manufacturer actually built within modern Ukraine in Kharkov. Um, who knows precisely where this manufacturing plant is. I would assume uh, any kind of aircraft manufacturing plant uh, would be close to an airfield, right? So, you know, in this area, maybe we can see some of these things parked on the runways. Who knows? This is this looks like the uh, the actual international airport. I believe the Real Kharkov Air Base is actually here in Chugoyev. It's like some MiGs. It's like a lot of a lot of MiGs, a lot of older MiGs here. Not really seeing any of them. I actually have images of it that I'm, I can pull up for you guys. Let me pull it up. This is uh, what they look like. Kind of does look a lot like a missile. Of course, this is one. Of, this is an older Soviet one. This is one that's um, obviously been marked up with Ukrainian markings. So pretty, pretty interesting. I wonder how many times uh, Ukraine can actually do this. You know, uh, this is this brings up another thing. If if Ukraine can reach uh, Ryzan from Kharkov, it could they could easily reach Moscow. So potentially, uh, let's get rid of this. Don't need that. Potentially, um, you know, the Russian capital. Could be under threat from uh, cruise missile strikes from Ukraine. It's very interesting. It's crazy that these things made it so far into Russia without air defense getting them. You know, that's over, that's well over 500 kilometers to there, or uh, you know, to Saratov, Ingles, nearly 700 kilometers. So you know, it could spell trouble for Russia. Who knows? Who knows how many of them they have? All right, guys, that's it for this one. See you in the next one.